Today is the 25th of October and we are in Thousand Trails RV campground in Las Vegas, Nevada. And that's our coach right there. And we actually leave tomorrow. And as you can see, they're fairly tight sites. We can't even put our awning out or it'll get into this uh, other coach here's way. We met Steve and Natalie here with the Red Dodge. And we got Bob and his wife in the Montana that we met. So we all went to a uh, guy who was singing, Dick is his name. He was at the um, activity center last night. So we went there and we all hung out and had a great time. So it was kind of a sing along. The guy's been doing it for over 50 years and uh, he is deaf. So it was really kind of nice to see him. He's got over 700 songs he has in his repertoire. He used to have a band and due to his deafness and other things going on, he, it's just him now. But he has been, he was in this campground before for 50 years, then he was gone for a little bit. Now he's been back in here full time for 11. But we've heard some really bad things about this campground. They weren't kidding with it being tight for campsites and or the roads. The roads aren't really that wide to get Some of these are two rigs nice. crossing. This one has pretty nice these corner ones have nice sights. Nice size, nice, nice sight there. No picnic tables. And so it just... Um, there are very few. I see a picnic table over there. There are very few picnic very tables. Few. I think they're just not, sites aren't big enough. Uh, oh yeah. That we agree with. Our neighbors found a picnic table and it, they're, I mean, they're, we're right on top of each other. So we're just going to walk around. Gives you an idea yeah. of what this campground is like. They have some small cabins like you can see here. I think that's probably the only grassy area we've seen. So they, you got uh, some pull-throughs, minimal, like two of them. Two pull-throughs, the rest are go around that way. back in. Sure. Look at how he had to lower his coach. He's leaving tomorrow also yep, from Washington day. State. Yep, he's Washington State. Now he's got plenty of room other than there would be a coach that sits right in here. But he would have plenty of room. I think this one's taking up. Well, yep. That's pretty wide. Uh, that's a wide yeah, they are pretty wide. Yeah. There's a hotel over here. I'm not sure what that's about. But or anyway, or apartments. Yeah. yeah, probably apartments from the looks of it now. So if you're in the back row, you can come out this way. Because that's that bounder down there. Oh yeah, yeah. This is on the back side of us. But anyway, you got the, got the idea of what this campground is like. If I had the, uh -huh. the motorcycle accident, now my hearing, and being able to share the fact that, you know, if you have a dream or you have something you love, when things get in your way, keep pursuing it. Yes. Right. I've had a lot of help. Uh, Chris, who I mentioned last right. night, yeah, has helped me find the key that I sing the songs in. So I do it because that's where I feel them. And, it is. Um, it's in fact, amazing. I'm in there starting to work on one that I had trouble with last night. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. Oh, the okay. first time I'd done that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's in my new songs list. And, <laughs> and uh, so, but it was fun. Once I try it, then I can see where I need to work on it. Yes. Right. And uh, but it's all it's all my comfort, and I, I'm so happy to be able to share that with people. Well, thank you songs between songs i have little cartoon things that come up on screen and little sayings yes and the one that i really like the most is that it's not the songs 
it's the memories they invoke. Yes. So when somebody sees a song on the list and they ask me to do it, and I do it, then the enjoyment, I see the enjoyment the person has remembering. Right. And I, of course, remember Many where things. I was and what I was Many doing when things. I put it together. Yeah. So this is the entrance to the park. And this is where we came in yesterday. And we had to stop at the stop sign there by the little flags because the gentleman in front of us <laughs> had to unhook his, his rig and his car and he was elderly and quite slow and we waited and waited and waited and waited finally we just started to unhook and uh, <clears throat> they didn't like us doing it at the stop sign but we didn't really have a choice we had to be somewhere and so once we got that done then we came into here and turned and came down into our spot. So, anyway, that's that's where you go in and you go out. So here's some horseshoes, and they do have a pool here. Appears to be open, doesn't it? No, nope, the padlock shut, but they do have a pool. It is that time of year, but it's nice and sunny. Little patio here. Get you out of the sun, get you a little shade. Unless you go in there. Well, let's go see. It says open 8 to 10. Is it locked as well? If I sound out of breath, I am. The altitude here is higher than what we're used to. <laughs> and we're just going to come in here to the office and see what they have. Hi. We're just browsing. Okay. Walking there. And there's the entrance right there. Yep, I already did the entrance. So coming in here. And we want to just video this inflatable <laughs> mouth for Halloween. We got ghosts in the tree. Oh See them? Yes. Why well, not ghosts? They're actually witches. So sorry about that. They're witches. But this is cute. Holy cow. Gives everybody ideas. There you go. And it lights <laughs> up like they get night. They've got I, they got cord running, running there, so I have a so feeling it's, it's an air fan or something. It might be air and it might be lights, who knows? But up, they got a gazelle. Got, mm -hmm. Yeah. They got room to put that out. We yeah, don't we don't have room to do ours. We have one like that as well. This greenhouse. We don't have room where we're at to put it up. But, yep. Not very many uh, Halloween decorations up. <clears throat> so we're back to our coach and we have to make this turn and come out and go this way. So Steve here with the Ram said he would move his truck for us. That's great. And we'll probably have to move Donna's uh, things here just so we can get out. You want to go this way or you want to go down straight? He wants to go straight. Oh, look. <laughs> little boy and little girl sitting there. Integra. This guy was out uh, washing his Jeep yesterday when we came in. Looks like he's gone now, and the sights have filled in. So we'll come out this way. And go out down here. This 
So this is Dick, gentleman we were just talking to. He's every Tuesday, Dick Waldridge. How many square feet is in this? 399. Anybody think they can live in 399 square feet? This is the place for you. This is it. Perfect. So did you want to take a look so you know where you're going tomorrow? Yeah. I think I'll pull up right here. I'll hook up the car there. Good day, everybody. Today is the 27th of October, and we are in, where are we at? Cottonwood, Arizona. In Verde Valley. I never know where we are. We're in Verde Valley in Cottonwood, Arizona. We're going to take a quick drive around the park because everything is in a valley. So you start up at the top, then you work your way down to the bottom. And we are just about to the bottom. So we want to go up to the office and check out a couple things. So we're going to just take a drive around and see what we can see. Sites here are not bad down here. And uh, they are pulled through, so that's a good thing for us. But we're just going to take a ride. So come on along and see what, uh, what you think. It's actually a beautiful day. There are mountains around us. There's um, several trees, as you can see. Some full-time people live in here. And then we've got some folks over here. They even sprinkle their yard there. But there's a coach down here I want to check out. He's got a porch off the back of it, and I think it's a pull type. Mm, no, I think it is a fifth wheel. Usually you see them on fifth wheels. And yeah, it's a little fifth wheel. And our son Mike has a fifth wheel. And so he loves those. Thinking about putting one on the back of his little fifth wheel um, as an extra little patio access from the outside. But anyway, just wanted to take a look at that, see if it was a fifth wheel or a regular pull type coach. And so we are in B section, B as in boy. Got gullies. We got scrub brush and trees. We got a lot of full timers down here. And by full timers, I mean they live here year round. At least for the season. Not yeah, for the at, year. at least year round, if not just the season. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a nice little place if that's what you want. Oh, these guys are here all the time. Look at that. They've done a nice job. They got a shed. They got an enclosed patio that stays there all year long. That doesn't move. I mean, look at these views. They're just awesome. This is where we were supposed to be. Yeah, we initially had a site up right up here. Is it in this one? No. Nope. No, this is not. No, we were in, supposed to be in J. This is F. So we're climbing up out of the hill. They put a, num a date that you're to depart on the front of your vehicle so that coach that just went by had the date of 1031. That means that's the day he's leaving. There's one 1102, 36, 115, you know, so they got different dates on them. So you can see how long people will be here. Section H here coming up. Sites uh, 1 through 119. So there's 119 sites in that section. We counted over 300 camping, RV, or, so okay, tent, camping, RV, and 
uh, cabins. in this park. Look at that tiered place over there. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I don't know either. I'm not sure what that tiered place is. It's gated. It's got a name on it. I'm not sure what it is. This is Jay's section. This is what we were supposed to have for 50 amp is up in here. In J7 actually. So it would have been next to the last one. But when we checked in last night, even though we had a reserved site, they said there was nothing available. So even though you reserved your site, it's still a first come first serve. So they just said, here's what we have available. Go look around, find what you want, but they're all 30 amp instead of our 50 amp. This would be a beautiful sight at night. Look at that. Uh -huh. Beautiful sight at night. And then of course we got more over here. This guy's just coming in. Looks like he's out the end of the month. Riverview Room Management and Sales Office. That's where we wanted to go for a minute. So we'll go this way. See what's up here. Other than the wind. Very windy up here. So each site's got these uh, railroad ties in the block so you know exactly where your spot is. Where we're at, it is windy, but not... Not this bad. Th there's a mobile wash guy. Yeah. Coming out of rim, walk, rim Rock. I would have a nice little pull... But when that's all back in too, I thought he was a pull through. Somewhere up here is an office, up down here. There's a tiny house. So I guess there are supposed to be a few of those up in here, but that's the first one we've seen. All right, we'll I'll be back in just a little bit. And of course, by the decorations, you can see they're getting ready for Halloween. Today's the 29th of October and we're coming into a little town called Jerome, Arizona. And it was founded in 1876. It sits up on a hill on a plateau. And so we're just going to take a drive around, see what we see. <laughs> we're going to go down to the state park. But you can see everything is built on top of a hill. I don't know what that is. That's part of the historical thing over there. But <clears throat> the multi-windowed building you see over there is listed as something to see. And there's one up on the top of the hill, some kind of a hotel looking thing. But I mean, these people are right here on the roadway. You gotta shore everything up just to be living here. Oh my goodness. Anyway, this is our last day in this area of Arizona. We leave tomorrow, the 29th, and we're going to head to um, Cactus Gardens in Yuma. So we thought we would just give today a drive around and see what we see. These are like 15 and 20 mile an hour curves. Yeah, the sign just said 10. Oh, the sign said 10? Okay. Yeah. Well, I knew you were doing nine. 
So there's that building I was pointing out that I saw in the brochure, or at least online brochure, is that one up there, up, up on the hill. I'm not sure what it is. Maybe we'll have a sign that tells us. that building that looks so great from the <laughs> from the road it's for sale or not private property yet looks like he's a forest head frame park so we're gonna head into the state park Oh, I see. There's a parking lot up here. Ezrite and Malasite. I like the blue in it. Yeah, isn't that pretty? Pictures of, 18 uh, horse and Valley. mule team from 1915. Yeah. Yeah, it was built in 1916 for $150,000. 8,700 square foot mansion. Mm -hmm. And it had the, this is the original concrete floors. Yeah. some of the exhibit space but however the plaster would work in Smith Floyd's original yeah as well as the paint throughout and there's the way the electrical was run slowly and the switches to call for uh, and the uh, library uh, with the spittoon next to the fireplace radio I mean look at you got his picture up here but you can't see it from here you'd have to get it from that wall this is a pretty amazing model. Shows above ground, Cleopatra Hill, the town of Jerome, the open pit mine you can see over on the back right side, Sunshine Hill. And then underneath this, they show the actual mines. They built up to show where the mines were. The shafts they built. Pretty interesting. What an effort to put all this together. This model accurately depicting the town of Jerome and the United Verde and the United Verde Extension Mines as of about 1937. It was built by Mr. Elliot J. Flood with the assistance. Mr. Dan W. Sullivan under the guidance, Mr. Paul Yates, geologist, and Dr. Louis Reber, Jr., chief geologist, all of the United Verde branch of Phelps Dodge Corporation. The model is being made available for the public to display to commemorate them in recognition of the distinguished service rendered by the Reber during his lifetime to both the United Verde Copper Mountain and Phelps Dodge Corporation. Wow. And here's a, another model showing mine shafts. This is a portion of the Verde Mountain extension. Hard to imagine. Dug around looking for ore, and once they found it, they would dig it until they exhausted it, I guess. 
This is really uh, good displays they've got in here. Great place to come if you're interested in this. Mining scams, <laughs> education of disinformation. So if you were a mucker, you got four dollars and eighty-four cents. If you were a laborer, you got three dollars and three cents. And then here's some sample checks. <laughs> so that check. So coming outside of the exhibit, we can see on the hills here some of the town of Jerome. We just had a video of it. It's kind of cool. This isn't anywhere near the amount of homes that there had been. But, <clears throat> excuse me, this is what we're seeing out here now. A lot of the landslides took out a lot of housing, businesses, all that sort of stuff. A wagon or a whatever was what attached to that with That's a heavy, heavy rock wheels and a little bit of metal for axles and whatnot. But this used to be a private residence that they, uh, I've talked about earlier, this whole thing in here. So from these garage areas all the way down to the outside porch. But now it's, now it has changed. The chilling wheel. And this piece, whatever it was used for, came out of Denver, Colorado. What is this for? Does it say? Doesn't say. Okay, anyway. Pardon me? Gravity five step mill. Gravity five step mill. So that must have been what they used for that. Cool. Just some of the scrap things they used. They're still on a display. <laughs> on the back side of this building. Look at these vistas. Look at these views. Minus the power lines, but look at the views. This reminds us a lot of a town in Colorado Springs where you go down into Canyon City and you go through some of the hills, but you also, um, where did we go for the um, POWMIA runs? Cripple Creek. Cripple Creek. Colorado. This reminds us of Cripple Creek, Colorado. You've got all the winding hills up and down the mountain to get into uh, Cripple Creek, which is a town full of casinos. Just in case any of you are traveling to Colorado and uh, like to gamble a little bit, you could go to Cripple Creek and uh, while away your hours. Great shops there for food in the casinos and there's ice cream shops and just uh, a lot of fun there. So this just really reminds us of that. So we're about 27 miles from Fla uh, Sedona and seven out of Flagstaff.